everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am going to be continuing on with the Rose Sink Dress project from Titanic. I am super super excited about this project and I got a fair amount of it done last week even though it doesn't really look like it because yeah that's what's happening here. So if you haven't seen last week's video be sure to go check that out because I talk all about the patterning like majorly in that video and show you kind of like how everything is going to work. This week I'm going to be doing a whole lot of like putting everything together and hopefully just about finishing it. We'll see maybe I can actually finish it this week but I kind of doubt it. At this point today is Monday July 17th. I am leaving for costume college on July 26th and I am wearing this actually before costume college on July 27th. So I don't have a lot of time to actually get this finished. So I'm really really hoping that I can do this. If I can't I will just wear this later on down the road to Emerald City Comic Con instead of to Costume College but my goal is to wear this on the Queen Mary the day before Costume College so we'll see how that works. Where I am at right now is that I have the outer layers of chiffon so there are five skirt layers total. I have the two most outer layers hemmed. That said, if you watched the very end of last week's video, you will know that one of them is actually hemmed in the wrong direction. So I either have to redo that hem or live with a hem that is hemmed to the outside instead of to the inside. And I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to do. Instead, I'm going to move on from that layer and work more on the lower layers. Now, last week, I also talked to you about how to flat fell seams because I am flat felling the seams for layers three and four, which are the other chiffon layers. So that's what I'm working on right now is assembling those layers together. And then I'm also going to be taking the bottom most layer, which is poly crepe back satin, and I'm going to be serging around the outsides of it so that nothing frays and then just assembling that one normally right sides together, you know, turn and press that sort of loveliness. And once I have all of those each assembled, and I run some gathering stitches around the tops of those, I am actually going to dip dye the hems of off the top of my head I think it is the bottom most layer and the second to bottom most layer I think of chiffon also gets dip dyed and then the second to top most layer is dip dyed pink whereas the other two are the purple. So those are kind of the first things that I'm going to be doing as well as bodice assembling. At this point I have cut out every single piece of fabric that I need, every pattern piece that I need, with the exception of the two bands of chiffon which go across the whole bodice and also the sash. So those all three need to be dip dyed so I am going to be cutting those out before I get to the dip dyeing and otherwise I'm also going to be oh and I still have to cut out the lace layer for the bodice as well um, but I'm going to attempt to be assembling the bodice which I do not know exactly how that's going to work <laughs> so we are going to see but yeah let's go ahead and dive right into sewing this week. So I bought some lace for the like over layer of the bodice or the over layer of the under part of the bodice which I wasn't sure if it should really just be like the part that is shown or if I might as well just do the entire thing and then cover it over with the chiffon. So I did the entire thing. Now that said I bought this lace in bright white and I decided I would tea dye this to get just a slightly cream look. I literally dipped this fabric in the tea the boiling tea for one second and it turned full on ecru. So it's not quite the color that I was going for but I just don't have the time or motivation or anything to go out and try to get more and it is supposed to be cream it's just not supposed to be like this dark so here we are and also every single time that I look at a different uh, picture of this dress all the whole dress is in different colors so we'll have to make do. So this though consists of three layers that I'm now going to flatline it is the lace it is the crepe back satin and it is cotton sateen down on the bottom. I'm going to serge around the outsides before assembling these base bodice pieces. Okay so I have gotten to the point where I really do need to dye things because frankly like I haven't actually done the surging of the lace flat lining yet but it's looking really really wrong to me and I need to be able to dye like the kimono sleeve portion and ideally like the waist sashy or not even sash but it's like the part of the bodice that's here. 
I need to dye those and just see what it looks like all together and see if this like too dark ecru is going to be too dark or if it will work because it definitely feels a lot darker than what I was going for and I'm just worried that it's like I need to go buy new lace. So my dilemma is there are 24 of these dresses that were made apparently. They're different. They're all different. Yeah, it's like really, really not helpful. I actually went through last night because I just wanted to look at like some movie still references as opposed to the main like high res reference that I've been looking at from the museum. And so I started like downloading all of, not even downloading, I started screenshotting all of these pictures off of Pinterest of like various movie stills or dresses that are displayed in other museums, like the one in Pigeon Forge and honestly some others. I don't even remember which all places these came from. They're all different. So you might notice that with these movie stills, the portion that is like ruched right here is primarily purple. Like there is not much if any gradient between the top and the bottom of this portion right here. But if we look at like the one that I've been using for this whole thing, it is very much purple pink. And this one, which I think is from Pigeon Forge, I'll put the name on here if it is, that one is purple slightly gradient pink. And then there's like this one right here, which looks like it is purple that has run to pink or maybe it was purple pink and the purple has run into the pink. I don't it looks very like muddy because we have to remember the fact that of these 24 dresses probably a pretty large portion of them were wet because Rose wears this dress for like more than half of the movie actually but a lot of that is when the ship is sinking and she is going into water and out of water and into water and out of water. And so we are getting like a lot of wet dress. And so presumably of the dresses that remain, I doubt that all 24 still exist because there were probably some that were completely destroyed in filming. But of the 24, they're different. And of course, I've been going off of one that seems like kind of on the verge of pristine, like it's a very delineated line between the purple and the pink. And I'm just not sure now if I should go with that because the ones in the screen caps are almost completely purple. And I mean, we're dealing with bad lighting and stuff like that when we're looking at stuff that is coming from the screenshots and also really, really poor camera quality because I feel like a lot of these were, you know, a 90s picture of a 90s movie and they're just like grainy beyond all belief. But the question is, do I go with all purple or do I go with pink purple? Or what? And then there's the question of like the layers down at the bottom because you know, if you watched my last video, you saw that I went through and I marked out like every single layer's color and what they should be, etc., based on the ones that I've been dealing with from the auction site. But then you look at the other ones that are in the other museums, or occasionally you can see a little bit of the train from the movie stills. You really can't see much of it because almost every time that you can see any sort of detail, it's a close crop shot because it just wasn't that kind of like detail in the 90s. There just wasn't. So my dilemma now is like, okay, well, it kind of looks like, especially in this picture right here, we can kind of see the back of the tails. This might be poor lighting, but it kind of looks like the bottom hem area, specifically of the back of the top layer, has been dipped in light gray. And then there's the question of like, are the two most bottom layers, both the base layer and the bottom chiffon layer, are they both purple or is one purple gray? <laughs> it's driving me crazy and I need to make a decision because I've like come to a standstill and I need to freaking dye this dress and it is terrifying me. And I guess I've just got to do it and like live with whatever the outcome is because otherwise I have to go out and buy more fabric and do this. And if I have to go buy more fabric, there is no chance whatsoever that this dress is getting finished in time for costume college. We are now right now Thursday night. I leave for costume college Wednesday morning. There's not a lot of time here. So decisions have to be made. And ideally, 
I would want like to do the kimono sleeve section that is gray, I would want to use that same dye bath for just a shorter amount of time if I'm dyeing any of the skirt hems gray. But I don't know if they're supposed to be gray. So that's where I'm at. I think I'm going to go take off my brand new Barbie dress and put on some like crappy clothes and go dye some fabric, I guess, and just see how it turns out. So I'm doing the test right now for the dye and initially I was using just this Rit Dye More Frost Gray color, but honestly my first test piece came out really blue. I don't know if it's looking blue on screen, but it's very, very like pale light blue, a bit of gray, but blue. And so then I decided, okay, let's try adding the purple dye more to the lot and see if that maybe helps it get a bit more like purple gray, because I don't mind if it's purple gray. And that first one, that did that in about two minutes. This has now been in there for longer, but it is still very much on the blue side. In fact, this is now, I haven't rinsed it, of course, but this is now getting very blue. This is a test, of course. So I think even though I don't have the poly dye for it, I think I'm going to go ahead and maybe try adding like the tan or maybe even a bit of the black, but I feel like the tan might be the warmth that I need. So I think even though it's not poly, this is what I used for Kirsten and that was a poly cotton and I feel like it worked on that. So I think I'm just going to add a splash of this to there, see what happens. So just as a little comparison, this is where we started. These are all slightly damp right now, but they have all been rinsed. This is where we started. This was the white or kind of off-white base. This was that first test that I did with just the gray dye in there, leaving it in for like, what did I say, four minutes? I think that's what it was, somewhere between two and four minutes. This was the longer one. This is probably now at this point like 10 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer than that. With the tan dye put in there too, and that little bit of purple, I think it is reading a lot grayer on screen than it actually is. It is very blue toned, especially when it goes into two layers. It looks really blue, not what I was going for. And just so you can see what it looks like over that two tan lace. Yeah, my dyeing's going really great. This is number two. This is no dye. This is the second one. So really, I guess one, two, three, if we think about it like that. And this again is reading very gray. It's also reading very dark, like just too much color. This is a better saturation, but it is way too blue. I want more warmth. So I'm at a loss. No idea what to do. No idea how to get the color I need. It took about a half hour just to boil that water. And the idea of starting over is like, okay, well, that's going to have to be a tomorrow thing. So if every time that I have to dye something, it requires an hour just to do a test and then dump out the water. That is super, super frustrating. But yeah, none of these are right. So I have no idea what to do at this point. I just added a little bit of purple into that same pot and literally dipped this in for a second and rinsed this and it is instant purple. So you know what? I'm just going to dye the purple sections with this pot and we'll return to the gray later, I guess. I think my skirts are looking pretty good now. They are just hanging there to dry in the garage, but I like the kind of ombre that we have and this one is a paler color than that which was what I was going for. I wanted the non-chiffon one to be a lot deeper especially at the hem in the train so I tried to get that kind of ombre look. I feel like the lightest part isn't even really showing up purple but it is purple like up to here. I think maybe you can see that and then it gets deeper as it goes down and then this layer will go over that and then a white layer will go over that and then the pink layer of the split and then what I think is a white layer with maybe some gray at the bottom but we'll work out gray and pink tomorrow. So I just wanted to give a little update on the lace situation. I actually went and took the lace that I was showing you that was too dark. I went and I took that and yesterday I put it through both a batch of OxyClean and then when that still seemed really dark, I also tried, it's like Rit Color Remover or something like that. It comes in like a little box and it's powder and it's stinky and seems very chemically and this still smells, but I tried that also. And I do think that it has gotten it down to a point where it is workable. Though that said, before I had kind of made that decision, I went back to Joann's today and I got two other options. The first option is just the undyed white that I had bought in the first place. 
it just looks so bright white. It's not great. And then this one, which honestly, this is the color that I want. This is like just off white. It's the color I want, but I don't know if it shows up on here just how shiny this is. It's very, very shiny. And it's honestly more open weave texture than what I would really like because hers is a more dense lace. So I went and I used what I had dyed and then lightened. And I think it's going to work. Honestly, if anything, it's that I feel like the background color now is just a little bit too white and that this is actually the color that I want. But in any case, it's going to work. I'm going to go ahead and flatline these as they are. I'm going to return the laces that I bought today. And yeah, and then once I have those flatlined, it will be back to dyeing to work on the pink and on hopefully the gray. I am dip dyeing these sash pieces because both the horizontal sash and the sash that hangs down, which are being made out of the crepe back satin, they are ombre. So they're like white on the top of the sash around the horizontal part and then pink on the bottom. And for the part that goes down the back, one side is much darker pink than the other. So as you can tell up here, this top part is not pink at all. It is still the ivory. The bottom part I've had in there a lot longer. So this is taking a little longer to do to get a slightly more saturated color, which is interesting because the chiffon pink, I'm waiting to put a little more purple into that one, but the chiffon pink, that died in about three seconds. So this is taking a few minutes instead, which is interesting, but uh, I have hardly any dye in here at all. It's like a splash of the pink, the dye more, and then a tiny splash of orange regular writ. And you can see this is the color difference that we're getting right here. There's a lot of steam coming up, so it's really hot on the hands. But I also used clips to make it even at the bottom so that I could have an exactly like horizontal look. I had ripped the bottom, but not the top here. So some of that is gonna be excess and cut off because I don't need it this wide. But I want a little bit more saturation. So I'm gonna go a little longer and then I'm gonna stop I've already dyed the horizontal piece. This is for the part that hangs down the back. So I know it looks like a bit of a mess right now, but everything is dyed, I think. Now I say I think because honestly, I kind of think that this sash needed to get darker. I just don't really think it's pink enough. This is the full width of the fabric, so I haven't cut it down yet, but even the dark side is not very bright pink. And I mean, it's not supposed to be bright, but it's supposed to be brighter than almost white pink. And also Lacey, who is Lacey.Neil on Instagram, has been so helpful letting me know about the different layers and colors of the dye because she was able to see the original dress in person. She actually let me know after I had already dyed, you know, the purple parts, that the base layer is meant to be purple all the way up. And so I don't know if it's just the wrinkles that are making this look not so great right now, or if it is that I need the purple actually all the way up to kind of like read through as ghost purple kind of but I may have to go back and do that so I am going to start putting together the bodice right now and I'm also going to press all of this to see it better because all of the layers are this level of wrinkled right now but once I have the bodice together and can put it with the skirts I can see if stuff needs to be re-dyed before I actually attach the skirts. So I wanted to put the bodice on again before I start adding everything to it because if you remember, I don't even remember at this point if it was this video or the last video, but if you remember from the video, I did actually decide to cut the kimono sleeve section on the bias, whereas originally for my mock-up, I had done it on the straight grain. And I was hoping that cutting it on the bias would fix this little shoulder ripple thing that I've got going on here. Unfortunately, it does not seem to be doing that. So the only fix that I can think of that might help with that is actually just to run like a tiny gathering stitch through there. And honestly, I will probably wait to do that like by hand as the very last thing just to try to get that bit fitted to my shoulders. Now it is also going to be stitched down. So once I have the like ruched up sections that go across the bust here, this will actually be stitched down on top because that was how it was originally done. That's how the kimono section stayed in place. And I think it also really helped to hold the ruching in place by having stitches right here. I would imagine that is also all stitched down underneath the underarm. And I don't know if it is anywhere on the back. Speaking of the back, the one, I guess, issue that I'm finding with this whole thing right now, it's not a big deal, but my 
princess slip does actually show in the center back. I was really hoping that I had cut the V high enough that it would not show, but I apparently didn't. It's still showing, so I'm just gonna live with that. I mean, she wears her hair down for this anyway. I am not planning to wear a wig for this. I do have like a red long curly wig. It's my Joe wig, but I feel like my own hair, once I dye it so my roots aren't just like absolutely awful, uh, I think that my own hair is probably close enough to hers and that would avoid having to wear a wig when it's like 85 degrees out, which is the temperature I think that it is supposed to be the day that we go to the Queen Mary. So fun. <laughs> But yeah, otherwise I think that it is fitting really well. I feel like the sleeve length is good, which is good because I have already hemmed all of the parts of the kimono sleeve. I just haven't done any of the finishing on the under bodice. I did sew together the center back seam just so that I could put it on. That will actually be a hook and eye closure, so I will have to make some facings for that. But I didn't have any way to like hold it behind myself while trying this on, you know, to see if it fits. So it goes over my head easily enough. I doubt that the entire dress will, otherwise it would honestly be tempting to forego the closure and just have it slip on. But yeah, I think that once we have like, you know, all of the sash type situation that it's going to be a little more difficult and I don't want to ruin, uh, risk at least getting makeup all over the front of this really light colored bodice by having to pull everything over my head like that. The one other thing that I am tentatively wondering about is that it does look like the kimono sleeve section, which I have not run gathering stitches along the bottom here yet that will have gathering stitches to pull it up to fit, but um, it looks like it's a little bit longer than the bodice underneath. So I don't know if the gathering stitches will help that. I also don't know if like once it is stitched down up here, if that will help, because right now it just keeps falling off my shoulders. So that's again going to be like a, this is the last thing that I need to do to this bodice type thing before I add the skirts on is figure out if I need to cut off off any extra length there but yeah otherwise and I mean look at the color this is like the exact color that I wanted I think it's that sort of like gray with just a hint of the purple so that uh, mixture of mostly pink with a tiny bit of the orange non-poly dye because that was kind of where I started and then adding in the gray that was actually the answer for how to get this shade of gray so if you are thinking about trying to do this, this is actually at least half pink dye that you're looking at right now. I know it doesn't look like it, but it in fact is. So, oh, and actually there was a dash of purple in there as well because before I had done this, I had done the ruched up section here, which I don't know if that's hanging in here right now. I don't think so. Oh, it's on the floor, of course it is. Um, but that has a little bit of purple in it as well. So there was a little purple in the dye also. This is what that piece looks like. And I'm really hoping that I will be able to use this because I had switched my tongs for like picking up the fabric while I was working on this piece. And then I realized that I needed to not do because those other tongs were getting dye stuck in them and causing splotches. Yeah, big, big splotches. So there are some smaller splotches throughout as well. I think maybe you can see that one. There's one kind of in the middle, but I'm hoping that by not needing like the tops, the top few inches and maybe cutting off the bottom few inches that I can have enough of this sort of pinkish color that I can put it down there. I wanted this to be a little bit more purpley of a pink because it would go with this one and have a slightly more subtle of a blend from top to bottom by going across like that. So that's kind of the situation there. Now I just have to figure out how to like crinkle them up and actually affix them. But yeah, I think that is gonna be the next step is figuring out this situation. Um, and also I'm gonna do the binding on the neckline. That binding will have little lace applied to the inside, like really, really narrow lace. I am not gonna have time for beading this before I wear this this go around. Uh, there is actually beading that goes around the neckline and there is some beading on the lace as well. There's also beading on the pink sash that hangs down at the bottom, like the hem points of that sash have beading on them. Uh, if I do this for like Comic-Con, which is my plan to potentially enter this into the cosplay competition along with the coat that I'm planning to make this winter, then I will add the beading there, but I just don't have time now. So I'm gonna figure all this out and do binding. I might actually do the binding 
next and then do this and uh, we'll figure out how this whole bodice thing goes together. So getting this ruching right has maybe been the most challenging part about this project so far, to be honest. It just felt like I needed about 10 more hands than I actually had. I have used like every pin that I own and I'm hoping that this is all kind of pinned in place to a point where I can do some nice little like occasional stitches like I mentioned like on the side seam or where the kimono sleeve will come over and it will actually stay in place. I have no idea if that is true because this feels very precarious. This part down here is actually backed with this. So I didn't cut off the bottom of the purple, I just let it long. You can see where it ends down here. And then down here, I ruched them both up together. And I like the more seamless blend that that gives. I feel like it was better than just doing the pink itself. I just folded down the edge of each of the tops here, and I'm going to hand whip stitch those down. Uh, probably whip, actually, it might be like a prick stitch or a running stitch or something like that. But just something where it kind of hopefully blends in, but it's all going to be by hand. So that is my next step. Lots of hand sewing, doing all of that, and also sewing down all of the binding around the neckline. I think I may actually hold off on the lace for now until I can do one that is a beaded lace. So we'll see how that goes. So this has been way more hand sewing than I anticipated, and I am not quite done yet because right now this kimono sleeve portion is just pinned in place. I want to put it on one more time just to make sure it's pinned in the right place. Like for example, I'm just not sure that it's actually even right now. I feel like this needs to come in a little bit more, but it's hard to tell on the dress form. However, you can see all of the hand sewing that I have done on like here, for example, also all along here, and then all of the binding and everything from the inside is also done. And of course, these go all the way around with the hand sewing. I did machine sew underneath here because it's going to be under the arm and doesn't really matter. Same with in the back where it's going to go into the seam allowance. But this part, it's currently still pinned underneath here because that's going to get hand sewn in and that is going to hold down the ruching there. Like some of this, I just, I don't love that big fold. I want like smaller folds. So I might have to tweak that a little bit before I stitch it down. But of course, all of that work that I do, it kind of partially gets covered up because of the kimono sleeve section that really goes around the whole thing. Like you can still see it through, but you can't see all of the detail like you can in the front. So hopefully this is gonna be right. But um, I also still have to cut off the bottom because I just left the length on there Probably, again, some of this needs to get cut off as well. I did run gathering stitches on the machine on here, so that just has to be pulled up to fit. And then up here, I ran a gathering stitch by hand, just with one thread on like the under inside of this bit from about here through like the back of the shoulder here. So you can see how it is just pulled up a little bit to fit. But yeah, so I will try that on tomorrow. If that all works, that's gonna get hand stitched in place there, and then I can start to add skirts to it. All right, as you can see, I have the bodice on. All of the kimono layer is pinned in place. I did wind up readjusting the pins from where I think I showed it to you on the dress form a second ago, but that was yesterday for me. So I did wind up readjusting that. One thing that I'm not in love with is the fact that I <laughs> never told you this, but I did actually cut down the neckline. So I think I took off about like an inch and a half of the height. Like it was just coming up too far up here. Maybe it was only more like an inch, but in any case I did cut some stuff down, except that apparently I cut it too far because now my princess slip keeps poking out, which is weird because I swear I double checked that it wouldn't. Oh gosh, there's a spider on the wall. Okay, I'm going to have to be very conscious of the fact that there's a spider over there and I can't lose it while I'm talking to you because you know what, I should just kill it first. Give me one second. All right, that's taken care of. So yeah, as you can see, it is poking out over here, the princess slip. So hopefully I can figure out a way to get that to stay down because I don't want that showing. 
but yeah everything is pinned in place this was very precarious to put on I did not sew up the center back seam because I knew that this was filled with pins I pinned the center back seam so that I can hopefully take those pins out and get this off that way but now what is going to have to happen is I am going to hand sew all of this bit here in place on top of the under bodice structure and then at that point I'll also probably baste in where the bottom of this hits because I think a little of this has to get cut off to the kimono layer but at that point I will go ahead and cut off all of the excess because I still have that on and that was part of what made it so difficult to put on was having all that excess on so yeah that's going to be my next thing here that I'm going to be working on during my patreon chat because my once a month patreon chat is actually happening in just about 15 minutes here and then once that is all done if I have more time to sew before my best friend's birthday which is also happening this afternoon then uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to press all of the layers on here so that I can know that they are looking right I'm getting more used to them I think that putting the bodice together with the skirts like having it on the dress room all together they were looking more right the one that I'm still really unsure about and honestly looking at it right here on my table next to the picture of it I really think that I need to re-dye the sash I just don't know if I have time for that so the sash is kind of going to be one of the last things that goes together but I am guessing that a lot of what is left is actually going to be a part three video to this because I am going to cut off the video before my friend's birthday tonight so that if I wind up doing any more sewing tonight that will be kind of the start of video three and then everything that I do on Monday and Tuesday before I leave for costume college that will also be in that video along with the final reveal on the Queen Mary because I really really hope that I'm finishing this in time. I'm just gonna put it out into the universe right now it's gonna get done and I have to pack and all of that sort of stuff. <sighs> We're down to the wire folks but yes i'm going to go do all of this hand sewing now and see what else i get up to by the end of this video so i got everything all stitched down along the edges and everything and then i cut off the excess around the bottom and around the back except that apparently i caught the side fabric while i did that i thought i was being really really careful but i guess it must have just fallen down a little bit too low because as you can see when that falls down it is even with the bottom bit right here so that's lovely now i've got a big huge gash in the side now that said that i think it's a little too far up to be incorporated into the seam allowance but it will be covered with the sash so at least it wasn't like you know here or something but yeah still unfortunate so now what's going to happen is i have been pressing the bottom layers down here I've already got I think like two or three of the layers pressed and I still have two layers to go just these two which these two were only dipped part way and it's just where it got wet that it needs pressing so just the bottom so it shouldn't take too long but those are gonna get pressed and then everything is going to get stitched on to here and I'm gonna have to do it like outer layer first I think I'm just gonna pin them in place I don't know I might base them but that's a lot of stitching and then so each layer starting with the outside and then the next to outside and then the next outside etc get attached into here right sides together and hopefully this is enough to like hold them in place and I don't need any sort of like tape or anything inside if I do that will probably get added at a later time because right now I'm running out of time so by the time of my friend's birthday party yesterday I got through to like pinning in like half of the chiffon layers onto the bodice but because of that I can't really show you what that looks like because it is filled with pins but that is where I'm at right now and unfortunately that is now the end of this video so that means that there is in fact going to be one more video where we actually like finish putting the skirts on and do the hems of all of the layers do the sash like everything basically about the sash and how that is attached which I'm really not sure of yet and also like the closures and facing and everything on the back and then of course the final reveal on the Queen Mary because yeah we're we're gonna get there I'm, I'm determined we're, we're gonna do it so anyway that's going to be it for this video if you liked this video please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon if you'd like to see more videos like this for me please go ahead 
ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon or my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can join my YouTube memberships or send me a super thanks right here on YouTube below the video. I also want to take this time to thank all of my absolutely wonderful patrons because I seriously could not do all of this without you guys. You just make everything possible. And particularly those patrons at the Romantic Victorian and Edwardian level tiers who are Mirage, Laura, Jean, Janelle, Audra, Emily, Kim, Maria, Sarah, Tiffany, Liz, Kimberly, Nurse Anita and Chaos Chan. Thank you all so, so much. Your support means so much to me. And thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!